in the early 30s, there were some American bombers that were faster than the American fighters. Earlier American fighters rarely break 250 miles per hour and struggle at altitudes over 20,000 feet. The Army came up with a document that laid out in very exacting terms what the performance needed to be for a cutting edge fighter aircraft. One of the criterion was a minimum speed of 360 miles per hour at about 20,000 feet. Many of the large aviation companies enter the competition, but one design stands out. Lockheed came up with the XP-38, a highly experimental airplane, which uh, was the only one of its kind. The P-38's designer was a unique American, uh, Kelly Johnson, uh, probably overall the most gifted aircraft designer in the United States in the 20th century. The P-38 is the first of Johnson's many radical designs. And his claim to fame is that he designed some of the most spectacular airplanes uh, in the history of aviation, including the P-38, the uh, Lockheed U-2, the SR-71 Blackbird. Kelly Johnson is a legend. Lockheed accommodates the P-38's huge inline engines and the super turbocharger by extending the booms all the way to the tail. The first cross-country flight of the P-38 was just a couple of months after its first flight. And the, one of the reasons was because Lockheed was very interested in demonstrating what the P-38 could do in order to win a massive production contract. The plane blazes cross-country, reaching speeds of 420 miles per hour and breaking the transcontinental record set by Howard Hughes in 1935. As it was coming into land, uh, the airplane's engines faltered and it crash landed in a golf course. Ice in the carburetors brings down the P-38. The plane is totaled but the pilot escapes with just minor scratches. This could have killed the program, but the promise of the aircraft was such that the Army Air Corps stayed with it. 